we drove home in tears and in shock that I wouldn't ever get to lay eyes on my beautiful girl again. I always thought, you know, he's going to be on the shoreline. He made it, you know. He's just, because of the cold or whatever, he's just, you know, passed out or too weak to move, but, you know, he's going to be on, on the shore somewhere. I remember going out to the garage, and he's sitting in the passenger seat of Riley's car, and catch it, and they drive away. And uh, I treasure that memory. Um, that was the last time I saw Connor alive. Well, my daughter was uh, on her last vacation before going back to school with her best friends, Katie and Gabby. All three girls love fishing together. It was a wonderful day. I mean, I have pictures made 15 minutes before the accident. They were having a great time. The boat, for some unknown reason, swapped ends and threw Callie overboard. She was under for, you know, several seconds and then she surfaced. So Katie actually drove the boat up and he loaded her in the boat. It was pretty much chaos, just trying to help her stop the bleeding because she had a wound to the back of her head. Jacob, our son, was 15 and he went on an end of school outing. So they were canoeing on the lake and they stopped for lunch at um, a boat landing. It was time to reload the canoes and continue their outing, and so they were gathering the students and couldn't find Jacob and Jeremy. Then one of the men who was a chaperone on the trip just had an impulse to dive and look in the water. He was feeling along the bottom and felt a body there. So he pulled up that body, and that was our son Jacob. Brandon calls me up at work and says, I'm going to check a trot line with Taylor and Justin. Based on the weather coming in, they probably should have never gone out. All of a sudden you have these gusts of winds of, you know, up to 30 and 40 mile an hour gust of wind. And apparently when they hit one of those white caps, it jerked the boat. And, and when it did, it jerked them all three out. Unfortunately, there was not a kill switch on the boat, um, and the boat kept going. So their life jackets that were sitting at their feet went with the boat. Taylor looked at Brandon and said, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. So he went to look at Justin, and then when they looked back, Brandon wasn't there. The boys were excited because they would have an extra day of freedom. And so they go to the lake and uh, they get there. It's a little bit late. Um, the sun is close to setting, but they really want to jump in. I mean, they see that water and they're like, we want in. So Connor did a flip off the top of this boat dock and um, he landed badly and um, he did not resurface. The water's 20 feet deep and um, he doesn't have a life vest on. It was determined that Jacob was probably underwater at least 10 minutes. Um, they started CPR on him and he did not breathe until 20 minutes of CPR. He was unconscious, um, took him to the hospital. He was in a deep coma for two months. He lives with brain injury. I think he's happy, but he's certainly very, very limited in what he can do. I mean, he is alive and he is loved, but um, this is not what he dreamed of being. Get a call that Taylor and Justin were in the hospital, there was an accident, and they said that the boat capsized and they can't find Brandon. You're, you're so desperate um, to, find, to find him. But you still, you know, have hope. I mean, you're, you're praying for a miracle. And then when they uh, called the search off that night, um, that's when it really set in. That started the first of 29 days of searching for Brandon. We knew that we had lost our son, but we never knew if we were gonna get him back home. Um, 
So every day it was, okay, today's gonna be the day they're gonna find him. And then I'd have to look at like the eyes of the guys coming off the lake after they poured their heart and soul into it and have to look me in the eye and say, I'm sorry we didn't find him today. When I heard the word resuscitate, I fell to my knees. So we immediately um, got in the car and we drove to Mineral Wells. So we get there and uh, we learn that, that Connor was gone. So just in the course of five hours, one Friday, our happy family of four turned into a broken family of three. The water was a place of joy for our family for many years. I see what I can't see. I see Connor under the water and I can't get to him. That's what I see. I got this phone call and he said, Donna, there's been an accident. It's Callie. It's bad. My assistant came in, tears in her eyes. You know, she said, Donna's on the phone. She's hysterical. And Donna couldn't even speak. She was saying Callie was thrown from a boat. You know, she had a terrible accident. I have to go to the coast now. You know, we had a three-hour drive to the coast. That was just horrible. The worst drive you could ever have. Because you think when you get there, she's probably going to be gone. <clears throat> yeah, she was. So we get to the hospital, and the nurse greets us at the front door. I knew it wasn't good. They take us into a room, and the doctor comes in. I'm very sorry, but your daughter didn't make it. And I wailed, and James just sunk. James chose to see her. I chose not to. I, I couldn't live with seeing her like that. You know, and seeing her uh, in that state was quite difficult. Because <laughs> I went in there to identify her. And she was beautiful, <laughs> but gone. especially as our children get older. I think the best thing we can do is encourage them to be aware that they are mortal and that accidents can happen to them. Regardless of, I know how to swim, I'm a good swimmer, I'm strong, we're not stronger than Mother Nature and, and that water is, is unforgiving. Something that I think is very important to remember is that drowning doesn't always look like drowning. That many times people who are drowning aren't flailing or yelling. Drowning is uh, never intentional, but it's almost always preventable. Look at the situations and not put yourself in something that's beyond your limits. And obviously if they would have had their life jackets, um, they would have all survived. Have your children learn to swim. It could save their life. Always use a kill switch. Have your children always wear a life jacket when they're underwater. Know the conditions before you go out and you'll stay safe on the water. Don't assume your kid will be wearing a life vest. Make sure they're wearing a life vest. <laughs>